Hello, welcome back, Briar Rose Brigade, to my Gothic Grotto. This is Thorn. I use he, him, his, and we're on episode seven of the Midnight Ballroom pod podcast. You might remember my co-goat from last time. I I added asterisk co-goat every time I said co-host, so I figured I I better just start. Clearly it's a thing, I better start referring to him that way. Anyway, his name is Ban Banros. My little beanie baby goat who's sort of rainbow pastel green with sparkly horns and hooves. And let's see. Sorry, that <laughs> got distracted. Well, um, I I really had fun um doing his parts for the the last time. <laughs> He's he shows up with a different font and just goes help. Oh, Hello, 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 hello. This is part three. Like slightly cryptic goat creature. It's the same font I used on my new album, so I knew that I had it and that it would look good for what I wanted to use it for. Because I specifically went and got a new font for my album. Anyway. Oh, right. I figured out, I think, what the strange beeping is that you can hear in the background, just very faintly sometimes. Testing. Okay. It's not happening right now. I can't remember exactly what I do in order to make it happen, but I notice sometimes when I'm just moving around, my chair squeaks. Maybe it needs WD-42. <laughs> should re-borrow the can from my friend. Um, so, coffee break, just so I can tell you about my mugs. This is the one from the cover of my new album, which I've mentioned before. It's my red glazed mug that my mom got in France, actually. And we're drinking Death Wish Dark Roast. We as in me. If you are too, cool. That makes two of us. So, or how, however many of you there are. Um, just casually breaking the fourth wall here <laughs> in a different way from <laughs> like sus the suspended disbelief of oh yes the YouTuber's talking to me like well I am in a way I can't believe I referred to myself as a YouTuber that's still weird but it is a long held dream so that's nice it's also something that my when I mentioned it to my ex as something I wanted to do, they were they kind of poo-pooed poo it as they did much of my own dreams and goals. So one reason why I'm, I'm doing this, well, it's it's like a secondary reason. I'm just like, I, it feels really good to be doing something su um, successfully that my ex didn't think was worthwhile and by su successfully I mean people are watching and getting something out of it like I know I don't have too many views on YouTube yet but I've I've had my my friends who watch this um say 
really awesome things ab- about it and how, how much they enjoy it. So that is awesome. And obviously I, I want to, I want my podcast to grow and it'd be great if it could be part of my income stream, but like for, for now, this is something and that's, that's um, great. Um, so, <laughs> right. Before I forget, I keep meaning to say the reason I haven't put things up on my community tab, like I promised to one time, is because I don't have one. And I think that's because I don't have enough subscribers yet. Um, so, you know, hashtag get thorn a com- community tab. Clearly the only reason why I want my channel to grow. <laughs> so I get that tab. <laughs> so, um... But anyway, I think I've been doing pretty good with a semi-regular schedule that works for me, and it's it gives me something fun to work on in, in between other things, and just some, something fun to focus on just as I'm editing the podcast each, um, every week or two weeks or, or so. I'm filming Thursday night again, and I think I did last time, too. In any case, I just published episode 6 this morning, so... It seemed to be time to film another episode. (laughs) So, continuing with the coffee break... Yeah, the auxiliary mug is one you will have seen before. My pink u- unicorn thermos that says unicorn hair, don't care. It's from Cracker Barrel, oddly enough. I mean, they had some cute stuff when I went there last summer. I just, you, you don't think of mermaids and unicorns at Cracker Barrel, but it's cool that they're they're there. And I also wanted to um, show this mug, which isn't one of my special ones, but it's one of my dad's mugs from J- JPL. He he works at um, Jet Propulsion Laboratory um, as a spacecraft navigator basically. I know, it. it is really cool, and it's one of the reasons why I'm sad that about other parts of our, our relationship. But in any case, um, my... Okay, so this mug says um, U- Ulysses, and it has a picture of the spacecraft that bears that name, and then the word Solar ex- 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 Explorer. This mug actually came out... No. <laughs> the spacecraft was launched. You know, the spacecraft was was released new... new... like, new... new merch alert. <laughs> I, I, they're sending a new spacecraft to the sun. Um, it, it was launched, I think, like a few months before I was born in, um, 1990, which I realize is probably earlier than you thought I was born, but I have that trans baby face. Even before I was on T, like, I still had it. In any case, I am over 30 now. Wow, cool. It feels like a milestone. So, anyway, this spacecraft went up a few months, I think, before I was born, and they joke, my my parents joke that they named me after it because my birth name had 
three s syllables, started with the vowel. Um, the middle four letters were L Y S S, and um, the stress was on the middle s s s syllable too. So that's that's kind of fun, and my. My personal, so like, I, I don't actually hate my birth name. I'm not going to say what it was, but I, I only hate being called it when I, I've asked people not to use it anymore. So, but I, I do actually like it quite, quite a bit. Um, so one other thing that I like about this mug Oh, I'm gonna turn it around because it has my dad's legal name on it, so I'm just... <laughs> I might blur that out in post. <laughs> anyway, um, so I... Right. I've found out since meeting a certain goddess that I call Sun Sun Mom, or I also know her as um, um, Inanna and the Minoan Sun Mother Te Terasia. Um, for me, they're the same goddess. For for others, that may or may not be true, but. Um, so she's apparently been in my life this whole time, and I'm only only starting to realize all the signs, like, in, in hindsight. That ha happened with Gwyn, too. My patron, when he came into my life, I was like, wait a minute, you've been here this whole time. And I kept looking back and seeing hints of his presence. It was really weird. So this is happening um, also with her. And... One of these delightful little, like, what what's that word for? Foreshadowing, yeah. <laughs> One of the things like that is, I think this the fact that this is a solar exp explorer, which went up at the same time I was born and had almost my birth name. Um, and she's a sun goddess, so that's fun. That's one reason why I like to use that mug. And that's not, I can't remember if I said, that's not one of my coffee mugs this time. It's like Diet Coke, I think, because I, I like to have coffee and then like something that feels a little bit more quenchy to use a word that um it's from that one episode of avatar the last air airbender where, where where they're in the desert um i do have my water too for haunted hyd hydration it's a term i introduced to the alt mods ghoul squad and she not only loves it, but also I mean, all all not her, herself. She she not only loves it because like she keeps bringing it up, but she also remembered it was me, and that's really cool. Like I I didn't expect that. I'm I'm like well I'm I'm an audience member, and your audience is not huge, but like a good size. But wow, cool. I want to be that sort of YouTuber who like puts so much effort into knowing my audience members, I, I mean, as as long as it's feasible. So that's one really inspiring thing, I think, about her. Um, time to actually hydrate. I realize I just drank highly caffeinated coffee for hydration, but, you know... 
it's really more about making sure your mouth isn't dry for for me at least the other ter term besides haunted hydration that i introduced to the ghoul squad was wit witchy water i i feel like this is part of my gift as and um awanith of gwyn gwynapneith be being good with words <laughs> you, you know um i write poetry but i also come up with fun wordplay things and i love that he seems to feel like the awen or in my in my tr tr tradition which is at least partly based in Welsh paganism type of things. I'm not Welsh, but like my my path kind of is. Um, but it seems like my patron god Gwen is happy to give me um Alvin or ins um ins inspiration for fun things like jokes and puns and that kind of stuff. And he seems to consider that sacred as well as the deeply haunting poetry that I can also write sometimes. So, yeah. Um, sometimes you just get lost in a little green-eyed goat size, right? So, um, <laughs> he's so cute. Um, right, so we've done coffee break. Um, the reason this is, this episode is called what I think it will be called is because I was practicing JavaScript earlier as one one does <laughs> because it's fun and I want to get better at, at, at it and hopefully work as a programmer but I, I don't really know where this is going I'm just like well I've been told to, by my gods to do things that make me happy so time to code art um artistic re reimagining of me coding um, <laughs> using my two pointer fingers re really fast as if typing on a keyboard um that's that's your verbal uh, image just um description um so i was following along on one of the coding train challenge videos and I, I love the the person who runs the coding train, um, Dan Schiffman, I think. He's like the Bob Ross of learning to code with the energy of a children's show host. So he just makes it really fun and he's like full of wonder and excitement and also will happily show you his mis mistakes and where and ex and like take you step by step through where where he actually went wrong so that we um that we could all learn which is important in coding like it's it's so encouraging to realize that even an experienced programmer will often make mistakes um or have to have to look things up so along those lines i i had realized that i needed to probably brush up on JavaScript classes. Um, there, there are several basic sets of the grammar of coding languages, basically, and classes is one of those things. It's like you have nouns, verbs, um, the adjectives in a human language. And um, so I just happened to um, have my eye fall on a 
I think it's yeah, it's it's the one about making a quad tree. So I'm on part one currently. And um it happens to to be a video where he uses a, a lot of classes and so I get to brush up on how do we use a con um cons constructor function and other stuff like that. And um so I I'm doing this in the P5 um web at web editor and when you open a new sketch to start writing a, a new program it gives you a, a randomly generated name and they're always two words and some they make some kind of um pretty picture or just odd concept like i think one was trick um trick um tricky chame chameleon or like um crimson yo-yo or something like that um and the one that i just happened to get as my title was sunrise peak like a mountain at dawn and i had been hanging out with sun mom t today so i just kind of mentally looked at her and went oh okay <laughs> So, it is very nice to know that she's here and have that type of su support. Like, I, I, ha I have support from all my gods, but, like, in, in the situation that I'm in right now, it's just, I need all the support I can get, um... My parents are visiting my sister this week, so they're um, out of town. Sadly, this sister is not one that I'm in contact with due to transphobia and other reasons. But it is nice that, once again, I just kind of have some breathing room So, I kind of feel like um, Inanna or Sun Mom might just be the theme for this episode, <laughs> because for one thing, it is episode 7, and I think I was told by a friend that 7 is sacred to her, so. Also, I went and found my... Um, earrings I wanted to show last time that are for her part of my um, um, e um, the, um, the Inanna outfit one of them probably <laughs> that I'm, I'm gonna have they're blue um, sparkly stones that are a teardrop shape set in a, a gold backing and they're um, earrings as i said before they're one of the the things i just found lying lying around the house and asked my my mom if if she minded if i if i took them and obviously it was fine but that happened several times with different blue and gold things that i didn't know would end up being well i I didn't know why I was being drawn to them because I hadn't met or connected with Inanna at that time. But after meeting her, at some point I was like, oh yeah, all this stuff makes sense now. <laughs> Oops. I'm trying to be careful about doing the horizontal motion of things, like sl sliding things across because... It was pretty hard to edit that out last time. Speaking of, I happily, innocently decided 
to use my the the highest setting camera on my um phone last time because it was the the first time so i was like well let's let's just try it out since it's just to kind of celebrate the first time filming with this new camera and i didn't realize that this phone has very powerful um video cap capacities like i wasn't expecting a mobile phone to be that good but the highest setting was uhd 60 fps um and that is way too powerful for most well at least for my laptop and apparently like my according to my friend brian This Brian, holding up the, v I'm holding up the, Vicara book that, they they wrote, um. They're also a film, on um, editor, and when they heard, that I had filmed in that setting, they were like, oh no, that's, <laughs> that takes a very powerful machine to. Handle that footage. And I was like, thanks, I found that out. Because um, I noticed that it looked kind of um, grainy, and I thought, well, it, it seems like it's grainy because it's too sharp. So I had happened to find out how to take out um, visual noise when I was searching how to take out um, audio noise and just stumbled a across a video that I thought told me how to do it, and then they were talking about the red, blue, and green channels, and I was like, huh, that's weird. Oh, different kind of noise. So, um, and this is in um, the program I use, DaVinci da Resolve. And so, um, later in the editing process, I realized I would actually need that, or so I thought, so I went and did it, but at that point, my, my laptop was just like, no, and would not run the, the footage, really, at any speed, um, so I tried several things to, like, tips and tricks to make playback faster and I so I have a bunch of those in my toolbox now but it still wouldn't help so I I took the noise reduction filter off and just kind of prayed that if I sp split that clip in half it would work and it, it, it actually didn't take too too long with with rendering or um up uploading when I just did like 20 something minutes but I went and looked up well oddly enough I, I could find something that would just tell me hey these are this the settings of this type of phone camera and these are what they they mean but I, I did look at the actual settings and found out helpfully they tell you the frame rate and also the the type of HD like FHD, UHD, and so forth. So I um, searched Google, what is the difference between FHD and UHD? Between FHD and just HD, sorry. And I found out that FHD is better for the, the, the resolution that you that you need to have for YouTube, like the 1920, 1980, you know, there's a 19 in one of the dimensions and a 10 in the other one, <laughs> whereas HD is more like 720 something, so, which is weird because HD is called, well, I assume that HD, when it says Okay, we're finishing the standard processing after you upload a, a YouTube video. 
and and then it does okay now we're doing the hd processing i assume that was like an extra special format but maybe it's processing the lower version i don't know but you would think high definition would mean higher than usual anyway um <laughs> these mysterious things um Trying to think of a joke about this that is both funny and safe for work. Because, you know, I associate that cup with um, Sun, Sun Mom. I'm going to go with, like, you know, taste, taste the rainbow, except taste the sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway. Oh, right. I have decided, after I drink some coffee, that it is time to show you the um, choker that I keep talking about, which I made for my Vicaro initiation. I crocheted out of black crochet thread and it has a ribbon around the neck portion or like if you know the term beaded lace it's not so much beads it's like a ribbon beaded through the lace I love doing that so it's a black ribbon and then I'll bring it closer, but I'm just thinking of how to describe it. Um, there's a ribbon rose on one side, which I think I took off a dress that I made, but the rose had fallen off. And there's a bunch of white beads, um, just kind of crocheted into various loops that come down off the choker, and the largest of the loops are also supported by silver wire, which is cro crocheted with black thread around them, and those each have um, a, a dangly thing. On either side is a silver chain a um a couple of silver chains with some tear teardrop white fa faceted jewels and then in the middle is a more chunky <laughs> like gray chain with a couple of larger um black tear teardrop faceted stones um, the, the silver and white, um, danglies were actually part of an, one of the three sets of, um, earrings that I got that one time at, when I went to Forever 21 as a teen, teenager. I think it was like a church field trip with all of the teen girls. <laughs> so... I still have, well, two and a half pairs of earrings. I lost one of them, but I've used them in other things. So now I can bring it closer. It gets a bit tangled.
And yes, there is some of my hair in it. Look at how tiny those stitches are. <laughs> this was intense to make, but it's so beautiful and I love making this kind of thing. Oh, and here's the rose. I love making ribbon roses with just like, with, with black ribbon, because I love black, black roses, but just like kind of folding them and twirling them ar around on themselves. And it adds some, when you, when you do that on top of other fabric, it just adds some texture, which is nice, because I love the, <clears throat> pardon me, I love the look of monochrome all black outfits with a lot of detail that kind of subtly catches the the light in different ways and it's just really delicate and fancy it sometimes it's it's hard to like translate that feeling into actual physical outfits and then like there's the issue of time and resources but still that is what I'm I've, I've, I've always loved and I think I'm it's, it's kind of cool like um Gwen's been helping me reconnect with things that I used to love and didn't feel like I had the um the, um, the energy for when I was with my ex I'm just trying to sur survive that um but there, there's a lot ever since I ever since he really came into my life in the form I know him now and and also especially more recently like he's he's been kind of leading me to go back to old things that I that I used to love a, um, a lot and kind of reclaim them. Oh, by the way, my shirt, it's, it's from a um, thrift store, but I love it. Um, <laughs> I don't know where it's, from, where it's from other than that, but it's um, rainbow text and, and, a, and a rainbow rose, just a single rose on, on its side on a black background and on the top is all caps kind of four of um the overlapping phrases or versions of the same phrase and it says no thank you and then in this nice cursive script or no not cursive but it's like it's this very small and i um um the italicized words under the the rows it says have 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 a nice day like and <laughs> we're setting boundaries and we're tired of your shit but we, we we are polite about it and to me it's just it's like this is my i'm queer and i'm done with your bs shirt <laughs> so um it is helpful to embody that type of er energy sometimes I think we're going to cut part one here, and then when we come back, I have some crochet chat and possibly other things, but yeah. I think Ban Banners is going to help me sing the, the ending song. Here in my midnight ballroom, it's time for the end of part one. Thank you, Penrose.